Right, I think we might as well get started. I'm sure people, some people might uh, join as we as we're starting. But yeah, welcome to 2024, uh, another ACF Chat Friday session um, with the ACF team. If this is your first time coming, then thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you here. We are doing this every every other week. It is our open office hours with the ACF team where you can come and talk about ACF. You can come and let us know the problems you're having, the things you want to see in ACF, uh, any trouble that you're having that we can help. Uh, and hopefully, you know, we've got engineers on the call. We can try and work out what's going on or at least signpost you somewhere to get things solved. Um, we want to just hear about things you're building. Um, and we do sometimes have uh, special sessions where we either have guests or we have certain topics um, that we normally uh, tweet about ahead of the uh, sessions. But this time we've just got very much open open session. Um, we use the Q&A feature of Zoom, which is down to the right of the share screen button-ish. So you're, you're very welcome to post questions in the Q&A. Um, we, we can either answer them live or the team can answer them in the, in the Q&A chat. Um, and if you don't see the Q and A, please just post the stuff in the in the usual Zoom chat. Um, we're not a, a large number, you know. First week back after the new year, so if you do just want to unmute, raise your hand, or or just you know ask a question, feel free. You know we can have a a, a good chat. Uh, so yeah, we I'm Ian Paulson, the product manager. We've got Liam, Matt, Anthony from the engineering team, and Brian as well. And we've got Mike from, from our content team and Damon, who's our DevRel guy. So we've got, yeah, a, a good showing from the ACF team. Um, but yeah, very welcome to, to start us off. I don't think we've got any updates from a product point of view. We're still looking. Um, the next major release is ACF 6.3, which is going to happen early this year-ish. Um, not quite sure exactly on timescales, but that's the next major release. And it's going to be very much ACF blocks focused. Um, other than that, yeah, no, I'm I'm still trying to catch up after the festive period. It's felt like a good good time away, and I hope everybody is. I hope everyone ha else had a good festive time and are suitably rested after the the New Year break. So yeah, I mean, we can we can kick off if everyone, anyone's got a burning question. Just, yeah, please unmute um, and ask it. I don't think we're going to be peppered with Q and A, um, so we can kind of keep it as casual as we want. I mean, if we're not if we're not necessarily um, answering loads of questions, and we don't need to go for the full forty five minutes, we can just see how we go. I did warn Ian at the start that everyone was going to be in the holiday mode still and we wouldn't get very many people here today. Roger, yeah, it's, it's strange as well. Friday, I came back to work on Wednesday and the kids went back to school on Wednesday, so I feel like it's not Friday. It's just half, it's, you know, the week should not be done but I'm not going to complain also. Yeah, that's true. I know a lot of people are still off, certainly in the UK. They seem to have just taken this whole week. I'm very jealous. Oh, yeah. Well, and and from the sounds of it, the US folks have got the kids, kids back at school like in a week's time, whereas everybody else has gone back early. Yes, Raymond, go for it. Unmute. Uh, just introducing myself. Um, I'm a long-time uh, PHP programmer and... Uh, uh, not to go too off topic, but uh, I'm now regularly using uh, PHP Storm by JetBrains to debug into my WordPress plugins and other things. And uh, I've uh, uh, tangled with IDEs, a number of them over the years, but finally more comfortable about XDebug and, and all the P 
PHP INI settings. So um, anyways, I'm using ACF on the uh, advice of uh, Brad Schiff, who produces a Unimi course on uh, WordPress and things of that nature. So uh, he uses ACF. I'm using it to uh, establish a, uh, uh, I'm an electrical engineer, uh, but I want a math tutor, um, a mature programmer. Sometimes it's hard for me to find tech work, but I still recall a lot of my math and calculus and algebra and trig. So I'm trying to push into tutoring and using uh, WordPress as an e-commerce site. So I'm um, using ACF to add attributes to users who sign up as math clients. They're given a special role as math client. And then I have like flags and they're indicating whether they've downloaded the tutoring contract, whether we've jointly reviewed the tutoring contract, but also I'm using some of ACF attributes to monitor uh, downloads because I don't want to be flooded by tons ton, or tons of uploads. You know, I don't want somebody to upload more than three homework assignments per uh, appointment. Anyways, just wanted to intro where I am and uh, I look forward to future meetings here. Thank you very much for your uh, listening and, and having this. Nice. Yeah, thanks, Raymond. Appreciate that. Nice to meet you and good to hear about your background and, and how you use an ACF. Great stuff. Yeah, if you didn't notice, uh, Matt Shaw was smiling big when you said you're using PHP Storm. He is a big user of that one. <laughs> yeah, we have a couple VS Code users on our team, and I've been slowly trying to convert them over to PHP Storm. It's just that good. Yeah, do you know what? Talking about PHP Storm and X Debug, I was doing something yesterday, and since being at WP Engine, I've, I've been using local as the local environment or local WP, which is, you know, the local environment, uh, dev environment for WordPress, but I've not been able to get Xdebug, local and PHP Storm all connected until yesterday. And it was like a, a moment of just joy because I've just felt like I couldn't actually do normal work if I couldn't debug things and step through it in PHP Storm. So it's just, it's just joyful having it actually working. Hey, we got a, a question here on the sidebar from Simon. Any news on the possibility to have field groups at the top of the block editor? Oh, Simon, if, you, if you're if you up for just giving a bit more around that, explaining a bit more what, what you mean, do you mean in uh, p positioning things in the editor? I think certainly based on how that works at the moment, that's a... Uh... The reason it's at the bottom is because it's a WordPress, basically a system that they have implemented and their decision on where that lives. You can move it into the sidebar, but then you end up with this weird mismatch of legacy CSS inside the block editor. And people get very confused about it and think it's our fault and broken, but it isn't. It's just the two options you get with WordPress, basically. But we do want to do want to move that into a kind of native experience so rather than relying on wordpress's legacy system actually bringing it into the into the block editor more uh wordpress are also looking at that as well they don't like the, the current legacy st system it causes problems for things they want to do with iframes and, and things like that so there's a bunch of experimentation around it you should definitely expect it to move at some point yeah. it's just a case of whether wordpress's design team or our design team figure out where where it should go yeah, I've always been curious, like, where do people want to see it? Because to me, like, like uh, fields can be used for anything, not just like the content that's rendered in the middle, right? Like, it could be representing something that's like more global about the page. So, like, where do people want all that stuff? Yeah, it definitely yeah, feels it's... like a design decision that should be done by WordPress rather than necessarily us. But if we are trying to, like, keep in contact with their team, like Liam said, so we we don't try and reinvent the wheel or try and do something different if if yeah. they've got a you know a roadmap in mind for that sort of stuff yeah we had a chat with the some of the designers of the gutenberg team about this because we we kind of it's a problem that doesn't have a solution yet and they've not thought about it from a you know where should it live because they've got the sidebar obviously right which is where everything context related about the page should live in their head but obviously that doesn't fit really because the sidebar just isn't wide enough for some things and so you know there's modals and things like that but that they aren't, those aren't used for page specific data. So it kind of needs a rethink, you know, a way of either making that sidebar wider or, or, you know, a new concept of modals that are different than the other modals that are for settings. So that you kind of 
end up with a design pattern that works about the same. Yeah, and if you look at like Yoast, Yoast is another example that's probably having the same struggle or people are probably not liking that everything's at the bottom. And I, I'd be curious, where does that go? That probably ends up going in the sidebar, but if it's not wide enough, then what do you do? <laughs> Draggable sidebars, resizable, no? Yeah, I mean, that's there option, are plugins that do that and people people <laughs> do people do use them, especially with ACF because they want to turn off inline editing and then they move everything to the sidebar, which isn't wide enough for, you know, flexible content fields or relationship fields. So. I'll let you grab uh, that Q&A question, Ian. Yeah, Diego. So, yeah, so what can we expect about ACF blocks in the next update? Any new features or fixes? So 6.3... As I mentioned, as the sort of the next um, next major release, let me just get my roadmap, my internal roadmap up. The um, I think we we probably tried talked about it quite a bit before uh, in these sessions, but it's good to recap it. That the main things. Let me just get the timeline up. One of the the big things that a that six three will fix is if you are. In traditional ACF, you set a field to be required. You set a field to have a like a number field to have a limit. All of these validation things work in the classic editor, and they work if your fields are at, at the bottom of the block editor, like we just talked about with Simon. But if they are fields that you add to an ACF block, those those validation rules don't actually work right now, and haven't done ever since ACF blocks it it was released, which is a while ago now. So that's something we want to fix in 6.3 and we are we are looking to fix. Um, and it's been a bit of a, a the reason why it's taken so long uh, is because of WordPress and, and how they save the data and, and the way they that we would have to try and hook in to do that validation. But we are trying to to get to a fix for 6.3. So block block field validation uh, is one. Another feature is if you have created an ACF block and you've got fields for that block, instead of saving the field data inside the post content as part of the block data, we are working on giving an option for the block to say, actually save this post meta, save this data in post the post meta table, like uh, fields that would sit on the page rather than on the block. So if your block requires the, your editor to put in data but you really want to store it in post meta because it's a lot easier to to search, to query, to filter, or whatever, rather than the way it gets put into the post content um, column of the post table. Um, that is that is a, a a use case that a lot of people are looking to do, uh, and we need to make that easier. Um, so yeah, blocks, block data stored in post meta. Um, we've also got a a piece of work for the for folks that are using kind of either a headless site builds or um not necessarily headless but they just have a sort of a decoupled front end and they are building front end components for their blocks like in react or Vue. um but because the way the acf blocks um system works you need a php template to actually render what it looks like in the editor which is kind of annoying for those folks that have to they build a react component for their front actual front end and then to make it look like that in the editor they have to also do a php template which is, sucks basically because they're already building front end components in a di completely different language and then they have to go and do php so we're looking to make it possible to when you define your block uh, in your block.json file you could pass it a path to your front end component and that front end component will also be used in the editor to, to show that preview of the block. So you don't have to do things twice. Um, and then we are continually kind of trying to improve the way our ACF blocks, the editing UI um, appears and looks to try and make it a bit more native to WordPress blocks. That's kind of a, a, a grumble we hear quite a lot that if you're, if you're building sites for your clients and you're using a mixture of native blocks, but also a mix um, ACF blocks as well, the editing experience is slightly different. Um, there's a, this is a whole big piece of work really, but we're kind of trying to chip away at it to make it technically possible to maybe do things in the future, maybe a like inline editing rather than if you've got an ACF block 
you're going to have the sidebar that shows the fields where you can fill the data in. But if you look at the main uh, block editor um, section, you can turn the block into edit mode and it looks like a form, which isn't really WYSIWYG editing. It doesn't look like the rest of the um, the native blocks, like the paragraphs where you can just edit the data in line. Like we, we would love to move towards something that is a little bit more like that. So we're trying to trying to kind of chip away at these things that make it possible potentially in the future and, and just make the UI lot, look a lot more native. So, so clients aren't sort of using ACF fields that just look completely different to other like input styles. Um, and I think that's about it really from the, from the block side for 6.3. That's some, some chunky stuff in there, which is why it's taken a, a little time to get out. Also, uh, also giving up to what WordPress are working on in Gutenberg. Yeah, there's a lot of things coming soon that we're having to kind of chip in and give input on. Um, you know, we're active over there on, on GitHub and in discussions around shaping how they plan to expose Meta, which obviously will include ACF at some point. So all those kind of things. I think there'll be a lot of change this year in the in how this stuff works, and we'll have to make sure we keep on top of it. Yeah, Diego, you're right. Inline editing would be a game changer. I think, yeah, I just reiterate that will be a bit far far off. There's, there's definitely quite a bit of technical work to make that possible. Um, but yeah, we we want to make we we want to make sure that you know ACF blocks is already a great way to build blocks without a load of hassle. But we want to make sure that that experience for the editors is as is as tip top as possible and is as close to native blocks as possible. So you know the experience that they have by editing content with ACF blocks, they don't know it's ACF blocks. They just think of it as WordPress, the content editor, but to, to the developers building ACF blocks is just a breeze. Like the, 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 the difference of, of that experience as a developer um, will continue to be really good, but we just have to sort of align the, the content editing to be as good as well. Um, Raymond, you're, having a sort of a conversation around getting known field groups. I feel like I've almost done this in another plugin somewhere where I've had to go and get the field groups that are defined. I'm not sure if we've got brilliant um, our ACF get field groups. Yeah, there's the ACF get field groups. Yeah. Yeah, there's basically functions for everything in ACF. Historically, we've only documented the kind of common use cases, the things we want to make, you know, that people are likely to use every day purely because it, yeah, if we documented every single function inside ACF, we'd be there forever. And we'd also never be able to change anything. Right. So we, the, the things we document, we know we can, they're fixed and they're not going to change. And you know, we try and maintain backwards compatibility wherever possible. I don't think we've actually changed anything, but just to have the freedom to do that, if we do need to do a major release, you know, a lot of the stuff we're talking about in blocks, for example, is going to significantly change all of the blocks functions. So. There's no point documenting them because we don't want users to use them. But uh, yeah, you're definitely safe with the ACF get field groups. If we if we change that, everything will break. So that's never going to happen. Um, just as a as a sort of a side note, we talked about blocks, but I know in Raymond and your questions and Simon, your questions, it sounds like very much not block related. It would be interesting to know who's using ACF blocks. Maybe just drop something in the chat. So there's one, two, four, four, no, five non non WP Engine folks in here. It'd just be quite interesting to see the split because yeah, we. We're obviously trying to improve ACF blocks, but we're trying to improve improve the kind of core classic ACF um, field types and, and and experience. But it it's it's always interesting to, for me just to see how how our developer community or our ACF user base is changing 
towards the block editor, changing towards, you know, the, the more modern WordPress way of building things. And then that isn't said with any kind of it's right or wrong, but that's just the way WordPress is going. And obviously just, just sort of trying to track uh, changes. Okay, cool. Yeah, so Simon's using blocks as well. Obviously, Diego is... Yeah, the block validation is... Yeah, I would say that that'll be fun. <laughs> that, that's much needed, for, for sure. Yeah. Hey, Raymond, feel free to unmute. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, initially, in our discussion, I think uh, uh, I hope I pronounced your name correct. Uh, Lane Paulson, you mentioned about getting the local WP. Again, I discovered that environment myself a few months ago, and it just seemed uh, very handy to work within. But uh, it kept on um, pushing me into local host until I found a way to uh, make port 80 available by doing a service stop on my local Apache. So that was one of the gotchas. And then another one was the HPS uh, PHP INI file, which was being transcribed to a certain other location. And that's probably more of a local WP issue, but um, I found an inconsistency there, but finally got it to work. Um, but yeah, it's a the beautiful th thing. So good on you, uh, Mr. Paulson, for uh, getting local WP and and everything working together because uh, I wouldn't want to be in local WP and not having a not have a debug environment. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's yeah. we um we kind of sit within the same part of the organization as the local team. Um, so yeah, we're happy to pass on any feedback. But yeah, I think they've got quite a good quite a good community support um forum on their website. And I yeah, I, there's definitely I wouldn't. I wouldn't I don't envy the team building local because it's multi uh operating system like all of the gotchas around that it's uh, yeah anything with with um apache and nginx and stuff on people's computers that it's a nightmare um yeah yeah i've run into that exact issue before i spent like hours i'm just like why won't it resolve and like oh yeah i'm running something there <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it just makes it easier if you don't run anything else in the background, like and have just have a clean MacBook and local only rather than yeah. It's, it's funny just... because like all of my that's the first thing I ever install on a on a new machine. I for some reason just constantly have new machines to set up. And uh I've never had problems with local because I that's like the first thing I install, you know. So it's it's always gonna work like that. <laughs> I ran into uh an environment and uh, license dependency chain whereby um, uh, I wanted to use that virtual hosting. I wanted to say, you know, scholar tutor dot local on my browser because I want to register that URL with the license in simply scheduled appointments. So I thought it was ill advised, my gut instinct, to put local host there. And then anybody could be using, you know, your licensure. So I wanted to keep that very specific. Um, but yeah, you know, there were repercussions if I couldn't use something other, you know, I, I need to use the virtual hosting via the, um, and shut down port 80 and make it available. Anyways, this is a side issue to get it back. Oh, by the way, I think you guys and people and gals and everyone are doing good work and I'm tempted to start paying for, uh, Extra features in ACF. So, um, you know, good, good job on you. And uh, thank you again. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Good to hear. Uh, let me just check any other questions. Nothing else in the q and A. I I mean, I kind of happy to happy to sort of wrap it up and give people some time back this Friday morning slash afternoon. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe last call for questions or, or or anything, and then we can see where we're at and maybe wrap it up.
was going to say I'll give people some typing time if that's maybe the case. But yeah, I think we're I think we're probably probably good there. Um yeah, well thanks thanks for coming for a very early January session. It's good to see folks. Um as I said, we'll be doing this uh, every other week. Um and we do post we've been recording this, I probably should have said that at the top of the call, but we do post it on YouTube so other people who can't make the sessions try and uh, understand where where we're going with the plugin and and learn from any of the questions that have been asked uh, and we do do a, a blog post on the uh, advanced custom fields blog so people can catch up as well um so yeah we will we'll wrap it up now and we'll see you in a couple of weeks oh oh yeah one new message it's all right it's damon enjoy the rest of the day enjoy your day everyone um see you see you next time thanks bye see you bye